Okay, I, uh, as I've said before many times, I love doing videos about topics nobody else on any other photography YouTube channel does talk about. So let's talk about something like lighting ratios, why it's incredibly important, and why WYSIWYG, which of course everything now is becoming WYSIWYG, i.e. what you see is what you get. Let's just say, for example, and this is an ideal, this is a best possible scenario here. These are both uh, GFX 50S medium format shots taken with the same aperture. Okay, f4.5, same uh, ISO. I think these were shot at uh, ISO uh, 100. And uh, the difference is uh, nearly two stops difference of exposure on shutter speed. We have uh, 1 2200th here on this darker shot and 1 680th of a second on the SCF. Yeah on this uh, brighter shot. Let's say, for example, you wanted your shot, all this is a bit dark, right? Obviously so. It needs to be cropped, needs to be added, but ultimately, other than saturation and sharpening, so on and so forth, you wanted your shot to look like this, right? This is not an exciting picture. Neither one of these is, but this is to prove a damn example. Remember, this is best possible scenario using a lot of recoverable detail with incredible dynamic range on a medium format file. What this means is that any FX camera, DX camera, it's even going to be worse. And I'm going to show you the difference here. But I want my shot to look like this. So you got your camera, whether it be FX, DX, or medium format, you want it to look like this. You're going to crop this shot. You're going to change, drag your saturation sliders, sharpening, clarity, so on and so forth. You want it to look like this. So you dial it in, right, with exposure comp or manual mode, however you shoot, aperture priority, shutter priority. You dial it in, and you see this in your EVF or your LCD click. There goes the shot, right? What's the problem with this? You want your shot to look like this, but why is it a far smarter idea to take this same shot, which is nearly two stops more exposure, one six hundred eighty of a second, than this shot? Well, I want my shot to look like this. That's why I dialed it in and looked at... This is really like a fundamental secret of photography, but it shouldn't be. It's lighting ratios. Here's the other question. What's the difference between this shot and this shot, other than it being brighter and having more exposure? The answer is when it comes to lighting ratios between your shadows here, your midtones, and your highlights. And this, of course, is also 100% exactly more applicable for... Uh, for uh, studio photography and speed light and uh, flash photography, but all my ratios between my highlights here and my midtones here and my shadows here and here are identical. The lighting ratios remain the same. The lighting ratios here between midtones, which you can hardly see, highlights and shadows are the same. Okay, the only difference is exposure. So all my lighting ratios are the same. So why, if I wanted my shot ultimately, other than a little bit of tweaking to look like this, why would I shoot it like this through the WYSIWYG of my EVF, whether that be Nikon's new mirrorless camera, Fujifilm's mirrorless camera, or uh, your Sony camera. It doesn't make any difference. We're talking about WYSIWYG photography and why that is kind of stupid because what it does is it doesn't really tell you the fact that the most important thing in photography is sensor saturation. More info is always better. More better. More better. Why is this a better shot if you don't want it to look like this? You want it to look like this? Well, let's first go over here. Okay, let's first thing, and I'm going to raise my exposure. And we got it stop and three quarters difference. But first, let's take up uh, all our shadows. Let's just take it to the max on this shot, right? Let's go over here first. Let's go uh, here at about 400%. Obviously, I would crop this out, this uh, fence over here to the far left, but we're talking about information here. Okay, so now let's uh, go up here. Yeah, okay. Shadows, right? Raise up my shadows. Let me see. Now, I haven't changed my exposure here on the brighter shot up here. I've got a lot more information here than I do here. I've already got my shadows at 100%. Well, what about exposure, you know? Okay, but let's first go down here to the grass. This would be our mid-tone right here, right? Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. We're talking about this uh, shady area of grass here. Not mid-tones, but uh, our shadows here. Recoverable information, right? More information, better. So let's take this dark shot here and raise it up a uh, stop and a half. We're going to stop in three quarters. 1.6 stops of exposure difference. Great. Okay, so we raised our shadows up 100%, which is really stretching it. 
right? Okay, let's take a look at the dark show. Muddy, low tonality. Muddy, lots of detail, lots of tonality. Muddy, no tonality. It's mush. This looks like mashed potatoes. This looks like uh, candied yams. This looks like uh, that green uh, purified uh, pea crap that they feed little babies that's in a jar. And they squirt it out. It looks exactly the same way. Okay. Mm, tonality, detail, information. Yeah, none of that mushy crap, right? So let's take our shadows back down yeah, to where they were. And the same thing here. Uh huh. Let's uh, I think I raise it up a, I think I raise it up about. I don't need to raise it up that far. Stop at six. Yeah. Mm, yeah. There's on our shadows. Mm, yeah. And yeah. Let's uh, actually uh, normalize everything. Whoops. Excuse me. With our exposure on both of these, same exposure. Um, shadows highlights. Just raise up our shadows. Yeah, 100%. A bit too far, right? Shadows. Yeah, shadows only. Uh, yeah, here we are at 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see, the point is, boys and girls, let's uh, bring that back down, right? There we go. And normalize everything. Zoom out to about 100%. If I want this shot to look like this okay I am going to take this shot because I can make this is something I've said a thousand times and a lot of people have said oh you're dead wrong on that no I'm a hundred percent correct okay you saturate in your camera you expose in your computer is, is anybody actually understanding what I'm saying on that? I'm going to say it again two more times because it's so insanely important. You saturate in your camera, you expose in your computer. If I want this shot to look like this, that's a no problem, girlfriend. I can make it look exactly like that. But I have more here to work with. The shadow tonality and the grass or the side of the building over here Whatever the hell, of course, I would uh, crop this shot. I would not want it like that. It's like I really wanted the shot to be uh, somewhere. But we're not doing post processing here. We're talking about a principle, right? We're talking about a principle. There we go. Crop the shot. I want it to look something like this clarity sliders, blah, 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 saturation, right? That's too much. Um, yeah, a little bit more contrast, uh, brightness to go down a little bit, uh, highlights. Uh, yeah, I don't want that many shows. Yeah, something. This is still a boring as hell shot. <sighs> Sensor saturation is everything. If I want my shot to look like this, I'm not going to take the shot like this with my WYSIWYG EVF. This is the reason why mirrorless cameras make people create lazy exposures. You're undersaturating your shot. Well, yeah, but this is how I want my shot to look, you know, other than a little bit of clarity and saturation and contrast. I want my shot to look like this, a dusky shot, just like this. Yeah, but you don't want to shoot it like that. You want to shoot it like this. Huh? Huh? Nobody? Yeah. Does, does anybody understand how logical this is? Sensor saturation is everything. You saturate in camera, you expose in your computer. More information, better. Mm, more good. Less bad. Tell me again where more information is bad in uh, digital photography. Now, we're not talking about clipping the highlights here, are we? No. No, we're not talking about clipping highlights. We're talking about sensor saturation. Saturation does not either mean or imply or insinuate highlight clipping. Doesn't mean that at all. Also, too, when you saturate your sensor for the shot and composition, as long as the lighting ratios are the same, both of these shots are the exact same lighting ratios between highlights, midtones, and shadows. You have more information to work with, more tonality, more gray. And this is really important for black and white photography, where tonality is very... In color photography, it actually tricks your eyes. Because you don't, you see tonality with color photography. But when you start to, you render it in a black and white photo, oh my God, you see it big time. It is way more important in black and white, especially black and white portraiture. 
For those doing black and white portraiture, sensor saturation is really vital. Okay, I hope I made myself clear. If you like these videos, you could click the link below. And uh, I want to know why no other idiot YouTube photography channel has talked about this fact. Remember, lighting ratios, sensor saturation, more information better. Expose, saturate, excuse me, saturate in your camera and expose in your computer. You can't tell me I'm wrong because I'm not. I'm 100% correct. I'm not saying change your lighting ratios. Keep the lighting ratios you want relative to the composition that you want or need, but saturate in your camera. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I made this very, very simple because it is kind of simple, but nobody talks about it. I think they don't know what the hell it is. It's really very important for photography, but nobody makes videos on this sort of topic, but they should. Thank you, and goodbye.